Good afternoon, everyone. Another week here we are. Another beautiful week. And what are we talking about today? Well, we're going to split up a little bit today and we'll talk a bit about emotional hurts, a little bit about headaches, uh, what causes headaches and how they can be relieved and, you know, what people can do about them. Because I don't believe people have to put up with them. Yes. And uh, spiritually, I don't believe that we're supposed to suffer pain anyway. So it's more about finding the nature of what's causing it and what we can do to release it. We're emotional creatures. You know, basically, I believe we're here for a pathway, if you like, through life, transition through life. And the idea is that we recognize that there's going to be suffering along the way. I went to a talk the other night with a Buddhist teacher, and as he said, life is suffering. And that's what you have to learn, and you have to move through that to say, well, it may be suffering, but I don't have to hold on to the emotional hurt of that. You know, if I've been um, told off or I've been uh, neglected or something else has happened to me, I don't have to hold on to that emotional hurt. And the moment you do hold on to the emotional hurt, the mo- moment you lock it in your body, you, you go tense, you go anxious, and usually as a child this all happens, we set ourselves up that wherever we come into a situation like that in the future, we're going to go back to that old emotional pattern of holding, that old emotional pattern of hanging on, rather than being able to breathe through it and get through it. Where does emotional hurts hurt us in our body? They can hurt us anywhere. You know, they can hurt us in our neck, they can hurt us in our back, they can hurt us in our knees. You know, there's uh, people I've worked with have had real pain in their knees and aches in their legs. And by clearing the emotional hurt that's there, And it's not just me, it's other naturopaths as well, because what we're looking for is, you know, what's really gone wrong in this life? It's not just, hey, there's a pain in the knee. What's that about? It's more about what's behind that? You've, you know, somebody will have gone to the doctor, they will have got medication, they're on anti-inflammatories, they're doing all of that. And we'll do the same with natural products. But then we'll say, well, what's underneath that that's causing that pain, causing that hurt? And how long has that been there? And can the person release it and let it go so they can have a life of free movement? So where does emotional baggage come from, David? Well, most emotional baggage, I believe, comes out of childhood. It comes out of the way in which we are treated as a child and the way in which we take that treatment is not just this happened, it's how did we react to this that happened? You know, and there's a lot of stories about abuse, especially with church and everything else that's happened. But as soon as someone casts themselves in the role of a victim, they're locking that victimhood into their body. They're locking it into their cells. They're locking it into their emotional structure. And that's ongoing pain. But if someone is allowed to to release that, in my experience, they can be free of it. They don't have to contemplate thoughts of suicide. They don't have to go into the pits all the time. They can be free of it. But it takes courage. It takes experience and courage to be able to do that. What about the energy of emotions? Well, it blocks the flow of energy in the body if it's a negative emotion. You know, if we feel joyous, every cell of our body feels joyous. Every cell, every part of us feels, wow, yeah, this is great. But if we are blocked, nothing is going to put a smile on our face. Nothing is going to make us happy because we're so fixated. And I was talking to you before about addictions. Addictions are fixations. This thing here is going to make me happy, so I've got to have this thing. And it's the same. This pain here is hurting me. I can't think of anything else because this pain is hurting me. Whereas in truth, it doesn't have to. You do, though, have to know how to get out of it, and that's the most important factor. 2NURFM 103.7. Tuesday afternoon, it means health and well-being with naturopath David Lomond with us. Oh, something that affects a lot of people. Headaches, David. They do, and they're debilitating for a lot of people. I had one client who, uh, working with Philip and I, and you know he, was, he joined Philip's Ton of Weight program to lose weight, and... During that time, I went and saw him and we discussed what was going on with him. Well, he'd had a headache every day for 40 years. And during that time, he'd had to retire. He was in pain every day. He couldn't concentrate on his work. So he he had to be medically retired. Now, within three weeks on the right program, no more headaches. 
The headaches only came back when he went off the program, when he did something that his body could not handle. So headaches, to me, always have a cause, and the cause is to do with the biochemistry of the body. So if you can help the biochemistry of the body, usually you can get rid of a person's headaches. Any other causes for headaches? Well, you could have a crook neck, for instance. You can have uh, stiff muscles in the neck. You can have, as we were talking a bit before, about locked emotions, which can cause headaches. There's many, many different causes for headaches. But if you start to look at it from the point of view, um, let's look at the foundation of the body, the physical foundation of the body. See how far out of balance the biochemistry is. Once we know that, then it's much easier to build a foundation that takes a person back to a better biochemistry. And when you do that, in my experience, most headaches go away. So how can we clear them or how can we reduce getting headaches? Well, one of the first things is to make sure to hydrate. And, you know, any time... See, too often it's, it's that people are just medicated. You know, they just say, I get a headache every week. I just met, take medication. I take this many aspirin or, or nurofen or whatever it may be. Whereas if they actually looked at, are they hydrating their body properly? Are they getting the right amount of water into their body? Are they dehydrating their body with alcohol or too many cups of tea or coffee? Where are they doing that is actually contributing towards that headache? Then the food they eat. So once you get the hydration right, you have to get the food right. So... A couple of things which really create headaches are chocolate, orange juice, uh, coffee. Why is it? Is there a conflict within the body when you have those products? There can be major conflict within the body for some people. They trigger off certain responses within the body which puts pressure up into the head. Uh, they're toxic in the gut and the bowel. And a lot of the problems with headaches, I believe, comes out of the gut itself. If somebody can actually work with their digestive system and heal their digestive system, usually they won't get headaches. So what more can be done naturopathically? Well, first of all, look at it biochemically. We do the RBTI for that. Others do other things as well. Um, any naturopath ought to be able to help people with headaches. They're not that difficult to help people with. What's important, though, is that the, anyone who has a headache, if you have a headache, what's important is to follow the instructions given so that you can really clear things up. And usually you can do it within a few weeks. And then notice if you reintroduce certain foods or certain chemicals into your diet, just whether the headaches come back or not. And the ultimate headache, of course, is migraine. And they are so difficult. To... They are are they caused by uh, referred pain from possibly somewhere else in the body that helps bring that on or not? Normally the gut. It's yeah. normally a gut digestive. Hormonal imbalances can also do it, but a lot of it's to do with the stress on the body and the way in which the body shuts down. Um, it's to do with the pain and the anticipation of pain as well. And usually you can reduce migraines by changing a person's diet and hydrating them. Very rarely uh, haven't uh, we been able to do that. It's just a very rare occasion that we haven't been able to do that. There's usually other issues as well, and we can look back on the emotional things as well. But migraines are basically a pressure in the, in the head, in the brain, and causing a swelling there. That if you sort out what's causing the swelling, if you can sort out what's happening in the gastrointestinal tract, and a guy called Henry Beeler was very good at doing that way back in the 50s and 60s. And he wrote a book called um, a Food is Your Best Medicine. And when people followed that sort of program of looking at what they were eating and how that was actually referring to headaches that they were having, a lot of people were able to get rid of headaches. And we just continue on that work, basically. There's a lot more we can explore, and we might do that in the next few weeks, too, on, on headaches and migraines. We can, and, yeah. indeed. It's Health and Wellbeing. Naturopath David Lomond is with us. Now, this is an interesting topic, this one. I want to find out some more about spiritual levels. What are you talking about with this today? Well, I believe that we are all here for a purpose. So that, you know, we're not just randomly assigned, you know, we just come down to earth randomly. I believe that we actually have a purpose of being here and it's to be the best that we can be. So why should we be consider ourselves any more better than any animal, a dog or horse or something, and, and have a life different to what meaning they're here for? We basically have a higher degree of consciousness. We have a higher degree of gifts and we have a higher degree of expertise that we can actually use those gifts for. 
some people are very creative, some people are very much theoretical, you know, they use their brain a lot. But it's more about, okay, what's my gift? What's my talent? What am I good at? And how can I help serve others with that? Because I believe that's what we're really here for, to serve others. Now, for you, when we talk about what we're talking to with spiritual levels, you like to talk about when it comes to that, we shouldn't really feel pain at all. Well, most pain, I think, is misunderstood. So if you can look at it from a spiritual perspective and say that, okay, say somebody's got arthritis, for instance, then spiritually, the temple that is their body isn't being serviced in the way that it needs to be. So there must be something going wrong with what's going into that body. So if somebody has a condition of pain, then there was usually an answer, and it may not be a medical answer. It may be a naturopathic answer, and it usually is, that is going to help them get out of that pain. It may be that they've got a crook neck, for instance. If all they do is keep going to the doctor, the doctor's not an expert in crook necks. Usually, they'll need to go and see a therapist who is an expert in those type of conditions. And that's often outside the medical practice. They might try a physio. They might not find that works. Don't stop. Because I don't believe you're supposed to be in pain. Look further. Find an osteopath or a chiropractor or a massage therapist or a kinesiologist or someone who has experience and expertise in those areas as well that may be outside of what is commonly considered a medical science and practice, but is an expertise which has developed over the years and is very, very effective at helping people get out of pain. So the brain sends us many, many messages. One of those messages through pain is that there's something wrong. There's something wrong with the body. I'm sending you pain to let you know. Yes, And that's exactly what it's doing. It's giving you the warning that something you are doing or something that's happened to you is going to cause you pain. I dealt with a a woman who had, um, because I also work with hypnotherapy and other hypnotherapists do the same sort of thing. I, I dealt with a woman who had phantom pain from a limb being ripped off her shoulder in a car accident. You know, and this was three years after the incident. She's still getting phantom pain. That's very interesting, isn't it? Phantom pain. Yeah. The limb is no longer there. Not there. Yet they're still feeling a pain from the hand yeah. or the wrist or something. Well, the, yeah, the How wrist. How can that the happen? Hand. Well, because we have nerve attachment. You know, if, there's a great book called The Brain That Changes Itself by Doig, which explains exactly what happens when uh, a part of our body is severed. You know, usually another part of the body takes up the slack in the brain and it becomes even more um, focused on that part of the body. And that's the same as uh, if somebody goes blind, their sense of hearing usually is heightened. But with this girl with her arm, you know, one session of her knowing how to let that arm go cleared the pain. We didn't need a lot of, you know, she'd been trying different treatments, different treatments, different treatments, but those treatments weren't actually addressing what the real problem was. The real problem was that the brain was thinking the arm was still connected. Mm. It hadn't let it go yet because every, I believe every part of our body has a spiritual purpose and a spiritual reason for existence, not just the body as a whole but every organ and every part of us, including the brain, has that purpose. So everything that we do, everything that we we get involved with, it's important for us to know that they're the right things for us. Okay, yeah. Anything else you can add and share with us about talking about the spiritual level? Well, the spiritual, I, I teach a thing called body, mind, harmony, which is more about people getting in touch with their own body. A lot of people aren't in touch with their body. You know, they they are in touch with other people's bodies. They see them on TV. They see them in magazines. They they compare themselves to them. That's not what I believe it's all about. It's all about knowing who we are, knowing what our needs are, knowing what our goals are for our life, not worrying about what anybody else has got, but just focusing on what our true needs are. 
Uh, something else that you touched on a little earlier, and I'd like to refer back to that, is the Ton of Weight program, which was yes. very successful. It was very What's successful. What's the thoughts on that? Is that on the cards coming our way soon? Uh, Philip's running another one at the moment, so yeah, yeah. and there may be another one after that. So, so if people would like details on that, they can also find yep, out. they can also find out from Philip. Because that proved very successful. It did. People were generally losing somewhere between 5 and 10 kilos in the eight weeks that he ran it. So it was very successful, and they were doing it what I believe is the right way. Yeah which is looking at their biochemistry, working out what they were doing that wasn't working for them and making changes. And we had people lose uh, arthritic joint pain, headaches, you know, a whole range of different things. There's a win there for so many people. There is indeed. Now, next week we might talk about prostate. We will. Um, I'm going to look at that from many different levels and just see what uh, people can find out about the need for checking on their prostate, mm-hmm. you know, for mm-hmm. men who Very are important. over over 40 yes. in these days, I think it's important that they look at what is going on with the prostate. Okay, that'll be an important one. So if you're listening now, if you know someone who has concerns about prostate, prostate cancer, tell them to be listening next week. We'll be here just after midday on Tuesday. Thank you for another week, David. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, everyone.